people. Yeah, but those pressures allow you to discover this little world, forbidden world in many ways of violence that mm -hmm. you could explore through sport. You can explore mm -hmm. it in. Uh, it's more socially acceptable to explore it through sport for sure. And even, but even then, there's like uh, at times it's socially unacceptable. So I beat Sam Schilt. I'm he cut my right eyebrow. I cut him and busted his nose and he's bleeding all over me as I have an arm bar on top. I'm getting, you know, it's raining blood. Just quote some Slayer uh, from a lacerated Sem Schilt, <laughs> bleeding in his horror, creating my structures. Now I shall rain in blood. But uh, I win the fight, arm bar, nasty one. I get on my feet and the first thing I do is I wipe all the blood off onto my hands and I lick it and I, do my thing mm -hmm. and l all the mma journalists freaked out dana wise like man i don't know about that you know we, you know we don't want him doing th everybody had this huge problem and then some folks would even contend with, oh you know what are you trying to do like no no no, this isn't planned this isn't i don't yeah. think of these things this yeah. isn't this is how i really feel yeah. this is who i really am and you know it was even kind of comical after the fact you know and, and bj Penn was on the very card with me mm -hmm watching him at some point in his career all of a sudden win fights and then and do this licking the glove thing and everyone thinks it's the coolest thing ever and i'm like hey fuck faces i did this in 2002 or 1 2001 and bj penn actually back then was like dude you're a badass you're a killer yeah. <laughs> you know where did that come from because that seems like a deeply human moment i could say i could just be you know goofy about it and call it orgiastic you know, to, to are we, are with, we with, back with to Titan. Mike Tyson? Yeah, but Tyson, but uh, no, no, it, it, it isn't. It's beyond that. Uh, is it a celebration? I've had some pretty, I've had some pretty decent orgasms in my life at this point. I'm 43, yes. so yeah. but no, none have ever compared to that. Like I said, it is a feeling of highest being to me, and I. That's your Ubermensch moment. This is this is where I feel like the restrictions of general existence in society are gone. And I get to fully live uh, in a state that feels more meaningful of, of the most meaning. You know, I think of it as life and death. And I, it's just, it is the way I'm built. And I don't have, I've never had any problem applying violence. Like it doesn't, I, I don't know where it comes from or how you would define it or whatever, if you want to stick me under in a, in a psychologist chair, but like, I don't there's a part of me that can just like I, no if if i'm gonna apply i can apply violence to any level and be okay with it and it doesn't i don't lose sleep it doesn't bother me it's not a problem it's it was me learning how to fully understand violence humans and, and the broader perspective that allowed me to think about things and like well what am I, what, what do I really want to accomplish with my actions in the world just on a whole, you know, not compartmentalizing, uh, my sporting career. Even when I get in the ring, y y I, I don't have any mercy generally. And if I do, it's because I make a, a, a really deliberate attempt to be in a state where I can have mercy. If I just go in there to fight with everything I got, I, there is zero. The natural state. state there's violence. nothing. There's nothing okay. that will hold me back other than the referee, and that's that. You know, I I know I agreed to to be allowed to do and not to do, but but within that, like, no. And I expect it to be done to me. But in terms of values, in terms of seeing what, to me, violence is uh, is just yet another canvas that humans can uh, paint beautifully on. Clearly, I mean, uh, we have venerated the violent. Uh, there are communists that venerate the violent on their behalf. Mm -hmm. There are national socialists that venerate the violent there. And then if you remove it from an ideological perspective, we venerate the violent uh, when they're a hero. We venerate the violent in our religion. Well, I mean, I guess some people venerate the violence of, of Yahweh and Sodom and Gomorrah, right? So, or, or do we say Jehovah? I, I don't know. Is there, you've already mentioned one, but is there a fight where you've achieved the highest of heights for your own personal being, just when you look within yourself that you're the proudest of, or maybe was your most beautiful creation? Is there something that stands yeah, out? Yeah, there, there are a few, actually. Uh, fighting semi-shield and a rematch. Uh, 
uh, well, the first one was pretty good too. Uh, but the rematch was, I, I was suffering. I had suffered early prior the week prior to, uh, food poisoning. And so while my abs are looking all right, uh, I in the ring didn't have the power that I expected to. And I was struggling in ways uh, in some of the grappling with the submission stuff that I hadn't accounted for. Just exhaustion or mental exhaustion? No, or I mean exhaustion like just something? physical, just, I wasn't back up to 100% in terms of just power output. And Semi was, well, he's always seven foot tall, but this time he was, the first time I fought him, he was 260, 257 or 260 something, something like that. This time he was like 290. Yeah. And so he was a significantly bigger cat. And he he was he's a big dude. And I just remember being in up against the ropes with him, changing levels, trying to take him down. And he's fighting, he's hipping. And I just thought in my head, there's no fucking way I'm gonna lose this fight. There's no way you are not going to beat me. It's not gonna happen. And I armbarred him, the other arm. <laughs> Even after the fact, he's like, man, I really wanted to get you for that. I wanted to get that match back. Yeah. And then you fucking got my other arm, dick. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, dude, I, I still love you though. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that. So the, but the whole time you're like, so, so this has to do the the dichotomy of you're feeling your worst. And having to overcome. And, you're like and make literally it, mentally telling yourself there's I'm, no way. There's no fucking way I'm going to lose this fight. And then there's even my last bare knuckle match and getting in the ring and fighting bare knuckle uh, boxing for the first time um and just thinking just being in a in a great state and just just looking so forward to seeing i mean i called someone uh i was talking to them the night before and i said yeah well i, I want you know i video called you because this face might not look like this when i see you next and they're just like Ooh, uh okay so that's not just like empty trash talk that's no that's like a clarity of mind and the seriousness of yeah, all i i go i might die battle. i'm most pretty high chance of, of being deformed some way so but fuck it i don't really are care. you do you think about are you accepting your own death yes when you go 100 percent. yeah i in fact and that's in a strange way that's partially what makes it so elevated in terms of my, my sense of feeling by being able to uh, have death at my side, it feels good. And to be there and to think that this could be the one, like, why not? You know, uh, I'm not a religious person at all, even though I very much have to seem, seems to bang on the drum about the usefulness or understanding the usefulness of religion for people. Um, but you know, if 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 I gotta do something, then yeah, put me in Valhalla, man. I don't want to be anywhere else. Nothing else seems like a good place for me to be. I wanna I wanna fight all day long and feast all night. You know, it sounds great. 